Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the 66 pod. And my name is Somi, and today we'll be talking about spreading good vibes on social media. So I have with me very social people, very vibey people, Christians, and all around amazing people. So um, I'd like you to introduce yourself, starting from Nathaniel. Okay, I am Nathaniel Ace. I I am a spoke word poet. I make videos, and I have a Christian community called Jesus Till Eternity on social media, and. I'm a tribe man of the 66. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Darren, Darren Sola, and I work as a social media strategist, and I run a network of um, social media managers, content creators, anybody that works on social media, basically, and it's called the Social Network. So yeah, that's me. Okay, and El? Hi guys, my name is El Mustafa. Um, I'm Elder Tribesman for the 66 tribe. I'm also a creative director and I rap sometimes. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> so, um, it's a pleasure to be here to be discussing this important topic with you because I feel like at this time, um, there's so much going on with social media and everybody, there's always the talk about your image, what it's about. So, um, we'll be anchoring this discussion on the Word of God in First Timothy 4, 12 to 13. Um, to 13. Um, Paul was talking to Timothy and he said, Let no one look down on you because of your youth, but be an example and set a pattern for the believers in your speech, in your conduct, in love, in faith, and in moral purity. So, um, first of all, before we dive into it, what do you guys think about this topic? Starting with Derry. Were you here spreading good vibes on social media as a Christian? What comes to mind? Um, I think it is this particular topic and everything that has to do with it is something that I have been very particular about in this season. Mm. In the sense that... Why this season, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I don't know. I, I went through a fast okay. in, in January. So I feel like that fast just helped me to double down mm. on you know creating like a sort of framework that helps to counter the negative effect of social media. Yeah, but uh, when you look at social media on a regular basis, on a day-to-day basis, we might not actually know that most of our behaviors and most of our pattern of living now is highly influenced by social media. So about two days ago, I was watching a video on Instagram and they were talking about Gen Alpha and um, that's the iPad generation, guys that start from 2010. Mm. Um, The video just highlighted how technology, social media, and the um, use of gadgets and everything that has to do with media has affected that generation. So they are now more violent. They don't have motor skills. um, They don't have brain processing skills that much. So I was saying some time ago that Gen Z's, we even still know how life was before social media. These guys don't know their whole life is based off of social media. And another video I was watching, this woman is a therapist, I think a child therapist or something. She said that she has 10-year-old guys in coming to her office and they're saying they want to get snatched like TikTok influencers. These are 10-year-old guys. We have 13-year-old guys that are trying to commit suicide because they feel they failed in life. And all of this is the um, impact of social media. And one person even said that before, devil had to take Jesus to a high mountain to show him the entire world. Now that high mountain is social media. On social media, you can see everything. You can see everything and like that, that's how you know you start deviating. So I think it's very important actually. We have to learn it, it's something that's very important. This is such an important topic by the way, but when you started talking, I couldn't stop hearing my mom's voice. With how she's always like, this social media. Yeah. Social media. <laughs> and you know, I told my mom, mom, I have a headache. And then she goes, turn on the phone. It's because you're pressing your phone. But it's actually legit. So, it's legit. And yes, it's like, it's like all those things they used to say then. And you, we just be like, oh, please, it's because you're old school. Yeah. Yeah. And now we are at least. Old school. For, yes, we're becoming, <laughs> we're becoming the old school. And it's just really funny um, seeing the effect in real time. You yes, know. we're facing the effect and it's going to get worse. Mm. It's going to get worse. Mustafa, what about you? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, social media is a tool. Mm. But generally speaking, I mean, people can say, oh, you use it for positive things and stuff. But from a Christian perspective, when you look at social media, sometimes it makes you feel isolated. It's like, um, was it 
Elijah or Isaiah crying out that, oh, there's no prophet left, mm -hmm. I'm the only one. Mm -hmm. So it seems that when you go online, it's almost like people hate God. Like mm -hmm. when you're an atheist, it's so cool to not believe in God, to not conform. You so smart. Oh, it feels like you're Einstein, you're the smartest mm -hmm. person in the world. But, you know, and if you're stuck in that and if you're in that space for too long, you start feeling like, oh, I'm the only one left. There's nobody even doing this Christianity thing. Well, you go to CICD, them, CCID, them, reboot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like young people filled up the whole place. Young people are filling up arenas, filling up places for Jesus Christ. So yeah. outside there, we're, there's a, we're, we're thriving. And now you see a lot of times Christians are trying to do, oh, we need to win on social media too. We, no, it's not, it's not. I know there's a lot of stuff going on there, but it's not necessarily real life. You know, so you don't think Christians need to win on social media? I think, I think we need to win everywhere possible. But we can't build, we can't say because it's now social media age, we're going to build something as delicate and as important as Christianity, just, not just on social media, but we can't prioritize it over what's happening in real life. Mm. But I have, a, I have something to say about that. Mm -hmm. Can okay. I? Yes, yeah. okay. yeah, so um, when you talk about we needing to build in real life, so if you look at the person of Jesus, when Jesus came, yeah. yeah. Before Jesus came, there was nobody that used storytelling to mm. preach the gospel. Mm. There was mm. nobody. Mm. And if we are going to say that um, um, we, we need to build more in real life, yes, we have to build more in real life, but we also have to move with the times. And when I say move with the times, I don't mean that we have to adulterate mm. our message mm. to maybe feed Gen Alpha or whatever, mm. but we have to ensure that the Bible says, go into the world and disciple. Where there are people, we have to disciple mm. them. Mm. So, and it is not one of the reasons why I run my network, the social network, is not necessarily because we want to, oh, be saying, Jesus love you, Jesus love you to everybody. But we want to counter the negative effect, you know, mm. the nudity, oddity, mm. the mm. drinking, the smoking that people see on social media and feel like that's the way of life. That's mm. the way everybody is going. Yeah. So, I, I, we want to now build like a digital arc mm -hmm. where people can be safe and people can you know just because social media is not going anywhere is it True. with the advent with the advent of the metaverse and all of that it's going to get worse and i keep yeah. saying it it's going to get I think, darker i think i i do agree with that i mean the 66 tribe before the 66 um before i became a tribesman here we had church parrot and it was, you know, social media, it was Instagram accounts where we were posting Christian content on yeah. Facebook and Instagram. It was, it's still massive and it's still, you know, in the works. We're still trying to restructure and stuff. So I do believe in the power of social media. Yeah. Um, I think my, my, my conversation was more around the fact that people get easily discouraged on social the media. output you get yeah. from what you're doing. Social, on social, social media. media yeah because it's like you know nobody's you're trying to, picking up your yeah content. nobody's picking up you know basically when you look at christian content it's, it's usually serves people that believe already mm. hardly brings in new you know based converts. on my experience at least it hardly okay. brings in converts and new souls it's always you want to spend time arguing with an atheist you can spend six hours and you're not going to get I've anything from it. That stuff. exactly <laughs> so I, I usually used to be like that on twitter if you say jesus is i go on and, on and never oh, we're gonna get to that never changes anything <laughs> really so it's, it's it gets discouraging you feel like it's one versus ten thousand which is what i'm saying in real life there's more and i think it's also i think maybe it's a conversation we'll get into eventually it's also more about the the tactics we're using so to speak now you see red whatever challenge trending and then we try to do a christian version of it it's watered down yeah, mm. we see a Disney <laughs> doing it and then we do a christian version of it you see a new trend and then you want to come and do the christian version no, instead of throwing away your clothes you throw your bible up or something like that most times it's corny to the people you're trying to get yes we're not very original on social media and it's why the community is just we serve ourselves on social media we hardly bring in new people that, that i think that was what i was trying to say but i do believe it's a tool that if we utilize rightly can actually you know do the the, the great commission okay I'm yeah awesome. and and based on like carrying on from what he's saying about doing the great commission on social media i also believe that we are we often give ourselves sections by default we just naturally just feel oh, we just want, we just want to have a christian page like for christian example mm. yes for example oh once yes. the christian twitter <laughs> yeah. once yeah. and that was one of things we faced in church pilot like the name church pilot already Mm. creates a community of all believers mm. so unbelievers are less likely you know to. less likely to be interested in the content and you can see the 66 tribe is just the 66 tribe we'll yeah. do other things we'll do documentaries movies so when the contents are coming out they're not coming out as christian contents 
you can have a documentary about um, about poverty in a particular area. Okay. And now, where why other I am a non-believer, a non-believer group, a non-believer related group can do it and point out oh the suffering, the stuff we can do it in a way that points to values of Jesus Christ, can point to the work that missionaries are doing in that particular area. Mm. Mm. So it's like you can be on the social media, not be on the Christian social media, but still be making Christian impact. So true. And it's one of the things I always say in terms of when I have these conversations with like Netflix or one, so I, I, some of my friends would always be like, maybe we can create our own streaming service in the Netflix <laughs> system. I'm like, you don't need to create a Christian streaming service yeah. because all of a sudden you've excluded every other person. Mm-hmm. Why can't the streaming service just be a streaming service, but the movies, the way some movies, we obviously know this movie has an agenda. Yeah. You just watch a movie and it's promoting a particular agenda, maybe LGBTQ, maybe it's promoting something. So ag- agendas are in a lot of these things. Yeah, so yeah. you can create your Christian movie and promote Christian values. You can create a movie and make your smart character. Because I believe totally, and I got this from when I was reading a particular book relating to Hitler. So and it was it's propaganda. Why did you say that like you were shy? <laughs> yeah. And it was something is propa- propaganda. Goebbels. Yes, yeah, Goebbels. Joseph Goebbels said, and it was like, and any information that you get, you get that is very simple to understand, and you get information over and over and over again. All of a sudden, you just believe it to be true. Yes. And I believe that a lot of movies have slowly made every smart character atheist. So you see, Sherlock Holmes doesn't believe in God. Um, any professor, one professor in one oh doesn't goodness. believe in God. Yeah. So slowly, over a long period of watching a particular set of movies, mm. you just naturally start getting the idea that it's smarter to not believe in God. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, why can't you just create a movie about even bank robbery? But the smartest characters actually believed in God or something. Do you get? Yeah. Maybe the police that was going to solve the murder believes in God. Mm. So I feel like not creating the sections is actually best in some ways. Mm. I mean, we need the people to create this. We need people creating for Christians to strengthen yeah. your faith. But we also need those yeah. that are creating, just creating on okay. social media. Maybe you are a doctor, your content is about medicals. Or you are on another page and your content is about maybe cinematography, mm. how to shoot, how to set up lights. But then, you're like, oh, if I start every shoot, I pray. You know, slowly, <laughs> oh you're just... Yeah. You know, I've been, I've been studying about indoctrination and yeah. I also work at Street Church and one of them. One I was going to mention street church, yes. but I didn't want to forget that. So okay. Go ahead. So um, I've been studying about indoctrination and be, I've been trying to create a framework. What you said is actually very, very profound in the sense that the way indoctrination goes, one of the ways me have devised as a way of indoctrination from my study um, is that they just put a simple detail that to you is easily overlooked. You can easily overlook it, but when you see it repeatedly, you begin to believe that thing is true. So just like what he said, that um, the smartest people in the movie, the main character, they mm-hmm. are not always um, Christian. No, they don't yes. believe in God. They are usually atheists. They usually say stuff about God. It is a very simple way of indoctrinating people. And when people see it repeatedly, I always say this, that the first time um, you saw maybe two men kissing in a movie, yeah. You were cringing, you were like, oh my goodness, these people, these Americans, they are foolish, they will go to hell. But now, I, I think I was watching a movie, and I, I usually like to um, watch female power movies, you know, when the male character is a female, she's a um, strong lead, alpha female, and all of okay. that. And I was watching this movie. Queen. <laughs> I was watching this movie, and <clears throat> it got to a point. Okay. <clears throat> I discovered that. <laughs> it got to a point. I told her that the lady was lesbian. Mm. But I couldn't, I couldn't stop yeah, because she's, she's alpha female mm. and I and must watch it to the end. <laughs> I want to see how she took over that business, you know. Mm. Yeah. And that's how indoctrination is. Me, I'm even aware. But although I don't, even as much as I'm aware, I don't watch those movies because at the end of the day, as in your awareness, they can still catch yeah. you. Yeah. But that's just, what he said, it's just a very, very But not to, not to be the dead also, I just feel like if this episode finishes and I don't say this, it's a pain me that I didn't say it. Okay. Just on this same topic is... I, I said something to a group of my friends and it was almost as if I was tackling like Disney particularly, but not really. But I feel like a lot of the since we're talking about Gen Z's and the younger generation, like you mentioned, um, Gen Al- Alpha. Gen Alpha. Wow, what a name. Gen Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about Gen Alpha. I, I was trying to show my friend a pattern in a lot of these Disney films, Cinderella to, to Frozen to Snow White. So the pattern is this. There's a main character that 
is told to act a particular role because of what they are like. Oh, you are a princess. You should do this. You should do that. Oh, Moana, don't cross that water. For mm. generations, everybody has not crossed it. But then the main character is like, nah. I will find myself. Yeah. And the only way to find ourselves is to disobey every single thing that was told, mm. every structure, institution that was put for their protection, everything that was put to tell them how to act right. And when you disobey it and you cross the water, you go for that ball, you meet so, the so, Prince so, Charming, so crazy. frozen, yeah. you just go out and let it go, yeah. and you build your ice cave. All of a sudden, that works out so perfectly. Mm. And, and, this, and all of us watched it, like me, Gen Z now, I watched it growing up, and Mm-hmm. Enough of that growing up at the formative years, it just kind of puts a very subconscious idea of rebellion. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. maybe we have to find ourselves. You, you have, to, have to be me. You cannot tell me what to do. And it's so funny that I, am me. I think brands are doing it now. Yes. I think FIFA had um, an ad. Was it FIFA or Nike? It was Nike. Nike had an ad. And the parents were like, oh, you know how when you're young and you're playing out too late and your mom is like, oh, come back inside, it's getting late. And basically they made a mockery of that situation that, oh, par- the child was like, ah, parents, this is what they always do. And then they disobey, they keep playing football and then eventually and then they, they make, make it. it. So, so it's, it's like, ah, once I disobey my parents, they don't know better than me, you know? So mm-hmm. it's just a me versus the system kind of yes, thing. You versus and that's even church. the system. Now imagine the Bible that they already don't like. Mm. And they are now, it's now me versus that Bible is even the smallest one for them to just say no, me versus the Bible, no, no way. They are just and stuck this in this is, book. This is this is so funny because like I said before, it's like all the when we were younger, at least when I was younger, all the things I felt like my parents were just, you know, they were just saying these things because they were strict. But now as I get older, I'm seeing that in ninety nine percent of situations they were actually they were actually right. Yeah. Like they were completely right about that. And then something you said about um, not sectioning reminds me of um, the street church. So I think yeah. the street church has been able to achieve that aim of actually spreading good vibes on social media, yeah. especially using the Bible in a way that is um, in a way that is intersectional. Yeah. I see Muslims quote them sometimes, and yeah. in my head I'm like, okay, that's that's really that's amazing. Nice. Yeah. That's good. So I think I just want one person to answer this. If you know, like, what do you think is the secret sauce here? What do you think they are doing that a lot of Christians are getting wrong? Okay, so I'm not going to talk because I'm the, you know, <laughs> <laughs> person. You probably yeah. have, you know, I will tell you guys my secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay, but okay, so I think yeah, I hold think... on. You're really not going to tell us. Okay, no, I'll tell you. But of yeah. course, we have um, trade secrets. Trade secrets. Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, that's okay. understandable. So I think you should tell us what we can know. Yes. But no before problem. you do, I think Mustafa was going to say. Yeah, I, I think for me, why? Well. You have the answer, so if I'm saying nonsense, you just yeah, look at that face. Uh, yeah. no. <laughs> I think I think they've been able to to get into urban culture, so it's not just they know what urban culture is saying. They know what the slangs are. They know what music is trending, and they're not scared to go and pick something from there and bring new meaning to it. I think a lot of Christians are scared to cross that line. Mm. I think we want to be on this side. We don't want to even go near the fire at all. But if you don't go near the fire, you're never going to get people that are in the fire. You can't be too far stretching your hand and you can't mm. go into the you fire yourself. But you have yeah. there's a there's a fine line, mm. you know, in between. And I think they're not scared to play on, on, on that line. They are willing to pick a slang from the dirtiest artist and use it and put a new meaning to it and a new and people resonate with that people want what's familiar and urban culture is familiar whether you're christian or not when you go out when they say oh this year no grief for anybody whether you're christian muslim atheist whatever that's you could relate to that everybody understood that now how do we and i think it's what they do to us in reverse actually we every content you can always bring with every um container you can always bring a different thing to it so you can i think i've used this illustration too much but you can have like i said a knife and you can decide to cut the bread with it mm. cut bread with it you can decide to do whatever else you can decide to fight with it so they are not scared to <laughs> pick that knife that's been used to do whatever whatever clean it up and you know use it to cut bread for for disciples. and you think like because you mentioned how um you mentioned how doing this 
at the same time not compromising is important. So mm -hmm. you think they've been able to maintain that balance? Oh, perfectly. I think a lot of people probably won't agree. Some people will be like, oh, this is not Christian. This, is, this ones are just enjoying themselves. This is, but you, you can't be, but Jesus Christ, they said things about him too. You can't be scared to mm -hmm. get those kind of feedback. And I think they're not scared because they, they keep going. And, and one thing I love about that content is usually backed up by scripture. So yeah. it's, it's, it's promoting the Bible. It's yeah. promoting the study of the scriptures. And it's, mm -hmm. I mean, I read the scripture and I'm like, let me see the next verse. Yeah. Or the verse above it. So it's mm. a very beautiful. Okay. So we've guessed. <laughs> so I think um, there was a time that somebody quoted on um, our content and you know tagged our founder icon or Lua. And it was like that what Street Church is doing is so powerful because indirectly you have read 30 scriptures in 30 days, even if you don't open your Bible. That's true. We are very clear on who we are targeting. We don't position ourselves as the one that, that's why like you never come to a page and see a content or speak in tongues for 30, 30 seconds. You will never see that kind of content. Mm. The people we are targeting, people with church hearts, atheists, mm. people that have a bad perception of religion. Yeah. So how can we get to them? You have to go from known to unknown. Mm. Mm. So you have to meet them where they are and now bring them because let me tell you the truth we are we as people maybe you grew up in church your daddy was nice and everything but there are people that their pastors have slept with them mm. people that they their pastors cheated them people that they went to church and they got destroyed you know mm. their self-esteem was destroyed people that maybe they have they um they had same sex um, same sex attraction tendencies and the church outcasted them like you are going to a fire you are going to we, we, we can't do anything with you you know mm. those kind of things these people still need god sure. and some of them still even want to god but the organized church religion the organized church system cannot work for them so mm. how do we now reach them when jesus says that we should reach everybody so it's our excuse that these people are too dirty for us to reach so people see us quoting maybe portable's um words or maybe ashake's words and they are saying that please there are boundaries you should not cross and i saw somebody on whatsapp posted <laughs> it on my whatsapp she posted it she was like excuse me there are boundaries you should not cross this is scripture this is skinny con you should not excuse me please the god tell you that it's contaminated Mm. <laughs> because I think one and that thing and that issue that we Christians have is that we are so wrapped up in showing unbelievers that we are not like them mm. and showing unbelievers that we are and better than them different. and we lose out on actually reaching out to these people and I was telling a group of people some weeks ago that when you see people most of us we see their sin first before we see them mm. that is so deep so you see people and you see this lady she's coming back from club mm. you've never even said hi to her Already, she already has a guard up because you are already coming with berets, you are already coming with skirts. And now she's wearing a big Bible and everything. And now she's wearing, you know, all the stuff they wear. And already, your eye of condemnation is like, this girl, mm -hmm. do you know that what you are wearing? Mm -hmm. Jesus will destroy you. Those mm -hmm. kind of things. You can't reach people with condemnation. Condemnation doesn't save anybody. And there's, of course, there's a way for traditional because at the end of the day, the reason why we are able to do what we do as street church is because there is that traditional church system yeah. that still grounds people. So we are not, we are not, we don't want to teach you doctrine. We're not teaching you doctrine. We want to get the word of God into your heart and own mind share mm -hmm. such that when you remember no grief for anybody. You know, there was one content that I did on Street Church and five scenarios where, um, I don't know if anybody, saw it, five scenarios in the Bible where no grief for anybody, where did not grief for anybody. <laughs> so, and that content went viral. So you see people, Muslims, atheists, everybody can relate to it because of course, no grief. And these atheists, most people that claim they are atheists, personally, I believe that most Nigerian atheists, they are not really serious, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> most people that claim they are atheists, they grew up from um, Christian, Christian background. background. So that's why, and that thing that we do is tap into nostalgia. Mm. So you see us doing a uh, morning devotion. You know, we have a song that I even released that is 13 morning devotion. We tap into nostalgia because we want to tap into that moment when you, before you before saw the world. So it's also a way of tapping into mm. people's emotions because those emotions are stored in your brain. Mm. So we are able to tap into the emotions that have been stored from when you were a child and we're able to bring you in and own mind share. Mm. So those are just the ways we use, we leverage on psychology, we leverage on um, trending culture, pop culture. We, we, we give people 
what they are used to, what they are used to seeing, what they can relate to it. Because another rule in social media is that when people cannot relate with your post, when people cannot relate with um, your target audience, cannot see themselves in your mm. content, then you will lose them. Mm. So that's just a brief on how we leverage mm. pop culture to yeah, do what we do as church. I think this is really important because I see a lot of Christian content, um, content creators, I see them struggling. I see them like I see people skipping over their things and they keep asking why are people doing that but in actual sense people want people want their um, like you said mind share and people want ideas that they can understand yeah. and relate to and a lot of times it's not presented in that way so I completely agree with you and I'm really thankful that you shared your some of your secrets <laughs> with us so um, I just want to ask as we start to round up this um, episode I want us each to tell us because um, last two years, or was it last year now? Christian Twitter was hot, <laughs> and it would—I mean, it's—it would be unfair to conclude this episode without talking about it. So, what exactly should the conduct of a Christian be on Twitter? Because I used to see some tweets, and I'd be like, ha, ha, "No, no, no, no! This shouldn't be heard of of a Christian or a pastor." Or the meaning star or the whatnot and i have this group of friends and we used to talk about it and one of them used to be like if the person wasn't christian that she doesn't even know how she would like see some of these comments and the worst part is because this person is a christian i'm not allowed to insult him <laughs> that's another thing i have to call oh them aside and talk to them so but like that's not the way that's not the way it is done outside so outside that's with what you do you know they would give you a piece of their mind so i want you i want i want you guys to know i want to know your opinion on social media what should, what exactly should the conduct be what is acceptable for a christian what is not acceptable for a christian well, well, one one thing i would say is generally speaking and i'm not a perfect i don't know i don't know, I don't know there are very great <laughs> lines on on this example i want to give but if you maybe I was playing ball when growing up and maybe my football hits your car mm -hmm. and you just come out and just slap me or something. If my mom gets or my mom is around that particular place, mm -hmm. she first of all fight you. Yeah, as you should. Don't touch him. Then maybe when we're inside next time, you saw car there now. You have sense. But the rebuke is kind of inward. Mm -hmm. So I feel like some of the conduct, like the major conduct that pisses me off a lot on social media is the Christians attacking Christians in certain ways that devalues the whole body. Mm. So if, if for example, and I feel like everybody has a target audience, so, mm. and I want to just point that out because you said something that might, try, might alienate some certain people doing a different part of ministry. Okay. So she was talking about she's relating, she's very specific about her audience and her audience is um, this church, this church hurt people. She's not really talking to people who are very serious Christians. Yeah, that's not their main. Even though they can also benefit yes, from the content, but they are not the from. primary target. That's true. So some other pages would have a primary target that is they are not trying to build new faith. They are just trying to strengthen, strengthen yeah. someone who already believes. So some it's not everybody that has to do a type of content that is relatable to the world. Yes. yes. So you can do content that's relatable to. So if you are not getting as much reach, maybe your but your content is not yet getting to the your target to the target mm, audience, true. so it's not like you get. So I feel like it's, it's the same. It's not one size fits all. Yeah, it's not one size fits all. You, the ministry God calls you to just try and do the ministry, <laughs> okay. and, and do it well, and do it well. Mm. So and because of the separation of the different ministries and target audiences, we see people try to bash the other, the other side. side yeah. So because you, you are reaching that outside as you are reaching this and then you start insulting other people that, oh, what you are doing is just for Christians. How can you call yourself mm. a, an artist and all you are singing is just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. There are people that do songs help. And because I'm singing Jesus, Jesus, I can now start insulting another person that is singing about life. But why are you using Jesus to scale through life? You are not a real Christian mm. because you are talking about how you failed the exam. Because is that what we want to hear in the church? So mm -hmm. I feel like that's one major thing that I see online, especially on Twitter. So yeah. different denominations. I, I genuinely, genuinely believe that every, not that, of course, there are false churches, there are fake churches, but I believe that the, a lot of the people that deeper life would lead to Christ, investors will not lead them to Christ. I agree. A lot of people, investors will lead to Christ. Deeper life will not even catch them. Yeah. So they are doing different works in different, in different that, that part of the body. 
and they are reaching different people. As long as the message you are preaching is not anti-Christ, it's not anti-the gospel, which is exactly. Jesus came, died, and resurrected. And Jesus is the primary focus. So I, one of the major things about the conduct is, I feel like we need to learn to not air our dirty laundry outside. Mm -hmm. Like, these people, there are many people around, there are people that their faith, maybe they, they're trying to, maybe I want to try church this year, maybe this new year, I just want to be born again, then you just come online and you just see a Christian say, ah, no church has Holy Spirit, a certain preacher, I don't say his name, yeah. I don't, it's not a preacher, a certain radio presenter has said that before, mm -hmm. no church has Holy Spirit in Nigeria, like, is that, <laughs> and he's claiming Holy Spirit to, is country by us, don't jackpot. I'm telling you. <laughs> And it's claiming to try and uplift. This is not edifying the body. Yeah. So, so I mean, you can do the rebuking in words. So someone says something, and you can be in the DM like, oh, my bro, that's what you said mm. on your timeline. Is, no jail. No follow at all. <laughs> I agree. But I think, then when you are okay. doing all the fighting outside, somebody that is in the middle or somewhere outside who is not like part of the body, face, eh? trying to maybe change this here, just says and like. Psst. This was the, no, not even true. We don't know. We don't know what is right. They yeah. don't even believe in what they are doing. This one can be wrong. This one can be wrong. Therefore, there's no point in getting into all of this. So I can just stay right there and just insult them in total. Mm. So I feel like us bashing, especially our leaders. This, mm. These guys are, are the. They have a certain form of popularity that bashing them doesn't just hurt them alone. It hurts a lot of things under them. It hurts the congregation, the name of the church, and people even going to the church. You just see. A lot of people don't even value some people because they are going to some churches. Even okay. mm, new generation church, I, I've heard that before. Yeah. That's what are going to new generation church. Now just song that they sing and fashion, and because yeah. of that, you devalue the person's whole Christianity. Yeah. Mm. And I feel like we should learn to be mm. our brothers keeper in public and rebuke inward, rebuke in your leaders' meeting, rebuke in your private conversations, rebuke where the rebuke where you, you are, people are not going to see the conclusions to that statement and to that conversation. I definitely agree with you. And I think that with this episode, we've been able to like highlight the main points. So um, spreading good vibes on social media is pretty important for us as Christians because social media is a tool and it's important for us to use it. Use it to the glory of God. Use it well. And um, amongst Christians ourselves, it's also important that we conduct ourselves in love According to um, the scripture for this, the scripture for this episode, you know, through this, people should be able to see and glorify God. We should conduct ourselves in love, in our speech, in faith, and in moral uprightness. So, thank you very much for this episode, and have a great. Thank okay. you. Thank you.